wonderful and precious name. Amen. So, brother, All right. we are anxious to hear what the Lord has given you. All right. Thank you. We'll see if this is on. I don't know whether Leroy's back there or not. Leroy is not back there, but marvelous he is. Marvelous. Oh, I didn't know he, he snuck in. I didn't even see him. Acts chapter 12. Man, we got a pretty good crowd tonight. Acts chapter 12. New Testament, Adrian. <laughs> I'm pretty wound up tonight. I don't know what it is. I think it was those donuts I ate for dinner tonight. <laughs> Might be what it is. It got a little sugared up. But I do, uh, I do want to let you very much know, and Marty reminded me there a minute ago, that we are very, very, very thankful for the way you all have treated us and taken care of us while we were here. And uh, it's been good. It's been good. We have enjoyed our time. It's been peaceful back there. We actually kind of feel like we've been on vacation a little bit. It's, it's a, kind of a slower pace than we're normally on. Normally we're, you know, preach on Wednesday one church and Sunday for another one and soul winning. And this one has a Thursday and one has a Wednesday. And we're usually go, go, go. And it's, so it's our travel time. And, and things have been nice to sit here in, in the same place for a while. So I thank you for doing that, allowing us to be here, taking good care of us. Some of you have given us some cash. Some of you have given us or given and given into the uh, check from the church, and we thank you for that. Thank you for the church. Thank you. You'll pass this on to Pastor. I've had a great time. It's been a blessing. Been taken take care of. Very good. Have you found Acts chapter 12 yet? I have to say thank you. What did we preach last time I preached? Remember? Didn't we just preach about thanks? So wasn't that just like the last sermon, I think, wasn't it? And uh, so uh, I have to say thank you, even though... Uh, anyway, I can't relay all of it to you, but all right, so Acts chapter 12, have you found it? Let's just jump in here and I'll read a few verses. It says, uh, now about that time, Herod, the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, and because he saw it pleased the, the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quatrains of soldiers to keep him, attending after Easter to bring him before the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Well, isn't that what we're looking at tonight? A little bit of prayer. Here we are, the church, and they're busy doing what they're supposed to be doing there and praying without ceasing as a church as well. And uh, verse 6 says, And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Dear Lord, we love you. And again, thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the whole thing in our own language. We thank you for the privilege here tonight to read it and to speak it. Lord, you've heard the request made. And uh, there's many, uh, many different things going on here in the church, and it's good to see the pastor back, and it's good to just get some things back and normal again, and I, I just pray that you continue to bless this church. But Lord, tonight we would ask you to, to speak to us all, challenge, encourage us. We'll give you the praise and the glory, and thanks for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I love this passage of Scripture here, and I wasn't back there, and it wasn't Leroy. I didn't, didn't get to give Leroy a sermon. I was waiting for him tonight to... Give him a title. He's always asking me for the title. And, and so I'll give it to you tonight. It's, it's kind of got, you could put two different titles on it. The first one would be Now I Know. That would be one title. And the other one would be, I think it's more interesting, a Peter's Prison Party. Peter's Prison Party. And yet yeah, it's another one of those sermons with the little ten, tongue twist, tongue twist, tongue twisting P letters. So I'm already going to get twisted up here, but uh, yeah, Peter's prison party, or now I know. And I just want you to think a little bit here this, as I get started, what the effects of this church's prayers are. What effect does this church's prayer have? I know you all pray, and here you are Wednesday, not Thursday night, rather. Uh, you've, you've, we've already prayed a couple, three times, and I know you have prayer life at home, but I, I wonder what... Shouldn't we be seeing some results of our prayer as an individual and as a church? And so we, we see here, and we'll read the passage of Scripture here, and, and we know we're supposed to pray, and we know how it works and everything. Back in James, there's a number, almost the whole chapter there, James chapter 5, talks about prayer, but I 
couple of verses there in verse 15 says, the, the prayer of the faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Here we are, church family doing just that, that, that you may be healed, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We know those verses and we know we should be praying and as a church as well as an individual. But uh, I, I just think here, uh, man, I... I just, I just wish sometimes I could see some more answers to my prayer in a clear manner. And uh, I mean, I do see, but maybe, well, these folks here in this church, they got to see some things, and, and uh, they got to definitely see some answers there. And I'm, I'm sure every one of them in this room has had to, uh, the opportunity, the privilege to see about prayers being answered and knowing that we needed to thank God for it and, and give Him the glory for it. So back to this a little bit here. Uh, by the way, I did not say it was Peter's pajama party, but we could also say that maybe, I guess, because it was at night, right? And uh, I guess I didn't say it, and it, uh, it, it, is, it sure isn't Peter's pity party, is it? No, we don't find that at all here, uh, but maybe I guess we could call it here Peter's prison party, but then again, it really wasn't a party either, was it? So, I don't know, maybe I, now I know would be the better better title for it, but We'll look and see, and let me read on down here a little bit further, and we'll see where that phrase comes from. We could see there Peter's in prison in verse 5, and uh, prayer was made for him by the church uh, uh, to, unto God, and Herod would have brought him forth that same night. Peter was uh, sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door uh, kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, uh, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hand. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And, and, and uh, he said unto, saith unto him, Cast thy garments about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate, which leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And, when, and, they, and, and they went out and passed through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know. <laughs> He said, wow, the, the light came on. You know, we're back to that again. Chink, chink, the light came on. He said, wow, now I know. I got it. I figured it out. I see it. Chink, chink. So we're going to read on a little bit further here. Verse back to 11 says, and now when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and have delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from the expectation of all the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, were there, uh, were, were gathered together, where they were gathered together praying. Here they are. This, we find them praying here, the same group there, the people like we've seen back in verse 4. And as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And I love Rhoda. Rhoda's a special, she has a special place in my heart. And when she knew Peter's voice, he, he's knocking. Rhoda hears his name, hears him out there, and she says, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told Peter uh, and how Peter stood before the gate. I, I can just see this woman. I know she was a blonde-haired woman. I just know it, and I can see she's on one side of that gate, and the door's going on, and there's Peter on the other side, and she just gets so excited. She says, Peter's out there. Peter's out there. And she takes off running, and then they come there in verse 15, and they say unto her, Thou art mad. I just love that little passage of Scripture. But, uh, oh, glory, I should, am I in trouble, Alyssa? No, I'm okay? <laughs> Good. Whew. Damn. Just got to thinking about that. I've seen her at Walmart today, and I'm glad she's here tonight. She, kept, she keeps her word. I'm, I'm glad. So, and, and they said unto her, Thou art mad. You might as well just expect someone's going to tell you that tonight before it's up. But, uh, but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. And then they, then they said, it's his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. And, and on and on it goes. Let me just read on. I'm going to anyway before it's done. But, but he beckoning unto them with his hands to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. 
Now, as soon as it was day, there was no stall, no small stir among the soldiers what had become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And when he and and he went down from Judah to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, and but, but they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamber and their friend, desiring peace because their country was nourished by the king's count, count, county, country, country, country. And upon the uh, set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. Well, he just gets in trouble here. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god and not a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory, and was eaten of the worms, and gave up the ghost. But the word of the Lord grew and multiplied, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was also Mark. Well, I like that. The end of the story is things grew and multiplied. Good things went on. It's a story with a happy ending, right? For everybody but Herod. It didn't go real good for Herod at all. And it didn't real go, go, go good for some of those soldiers and their families either. But there, we sure see, we sure see the answer to pray going on, prayer going on there. And so I want to, I want to just, I read all that and uh, we'll put it together. I may not, I may not go back with all of it, but uh, I'll give you some pieces of that as we go. But how many of you think that you've been persecuted sometime in your life? I mean, that's what we read about here. We see Peter being uh, persecuted by others, and, and uh, maybe you've been uh, persecuted a little bit at home and maybe in the neighborhood, maybe at church, maybe, maybe at school. I don't know. I, we know folks in other countries, and I'm sure you've seen some, are very heavily persecuted, and, and we may get that way around here before long in a serious manner. Uh, how many of you have gone something, through something and you didn't understand why, why me sometimes? We asked that and uh, didn't understand maybe why, why something was going on or we were going something. We happened to do something we or getting something that we didn't really deserve. You know, it's just we live and things go on. It happens sometimes. And sometimes we go through some things to learn a lesson. And, and other times uh, we go through some things just to, to draw us closer to God. And we need to look and find out what it is that, and where it's coming from and go from there. In this passage of Scripture, uh, we find out and we can read about the early church here, the problems they had because of persecution uh, that was going on there. But you know what? They didn't quit. Uh, they didn't get mad at God. They didn't stop believing. They didn't stop serving. And, and they didn't stop sacrificing. They didn't let the coronavirus of the day stop them. They just kept going. Well, I, you know, I don't know. We're all different here. What would, it, what would it take to, to make you stop serving the Lord? What would it make you to stop? What would it make to stop you doing what you know you should be doing? I mean, some people have already figured out what it took them to stop because they've already stopped. But that devil, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to figure out what it's going to take to make you stop. That's why we need to be praying like we read there, praying for each other, praying for ourselves, and, and just continue to do what's right because it, it could happen. It could happen. I don't believe any of us are above it. But let's look at this here. And I told you I had some letters, P, and we'll go through, through here and, and look at this and kind of piece at a time. But back in verse 1, we find out, Now about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Think about that. We just say there they killed James. Persecution is going on, and the persecution proceeded, and it's still kind of going on a little bit today. But they killed James. That's persecution, and persecution that has been going on for many years, and it just continues. So we find there persecution, and the persecution proceeded. It kept going. It kept going. Persecution, yes. And so we find there in verse 2 and 3 also that some people were pleased. The people were pleased with that. Some of the people, the Jews there, it said there uh, that they were pleased. We find down in four as well. Let me just read a couple here. And it, because he saw it pleased, verse three, and because Herod saw it pleased the Jews, 
he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him into four quadrants of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Yeah, oh yeah, the persecution proceeded. And some of the people were pleased. The expectation of the people. We look down there in verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety, and the Lord has sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hands of Herod. And notice what it says here. And from the expectation of the people of the Jews. They expected Herod to take care of some business here. And some more persecution. And it proceeded. And some of the people were pleased. But you know what? The, the, the Peter and the others, you know what they just kept doing? They just kept preaching. Yeah, Peter and others just kept preaching. And we can look at the persecution through Acts. I'm just not going to because of time tonight. But we find uh, a number of different places in Acts chapter 1. They stood up in the midst and said, and Acts chapter 2, verse 38, they're preaching on. I wrote down a whole bunch of places where they were. The, they went to the hour of prayer there in chapter 3, and the lame man was asking alms, and they heal him. He's, you know, the one where he jumped up and praising God and all that story there that goes on. And they were in there preaching, and chapter 3 answered the people talking about preaching there. Chapter 4, they taught and preached about the resurrection from the dead. Chapter 10, verse 34 and 36, we find the preaching. Uh, chapter 11 and chapter it goes on down there. They assembled and taught, and they were called Christians there in chapter 11. So they hear Peter and the others have been busy doing what preachers are supposed to be doing, and that's preaching. Peter and the others are preaching, just like we're supposed to do. And the teachers were teaching, and the pastors were pastoring, just like we're supposed to do even today. Amen? So we see there, yes, persecution proceeded. The people were pleased. Peter and others doing what they were called to do, and that was preaching. And now we come down to the party. We come, to the, the, we come to the prison party. There you go, your letter's there. Now let's just look at who was at the, the, the prison party. There's a number of people, there were a number of guests that were there. And it says there they, in verse 4, and when they had apprehended, they, they put him in prison, Peter in prison, and delivered him unto four quadrants of soldiers to keep him. So we have all these people there, these guests at Peter's prison party. There are four quadrants of soldiers. And I may be wrong, but I'm thinking the number of uh, Four quatrains means there was four groups of people, and a quatrain, I think, it stands for four, too. So how, let's just do a little bit of math there, school teacher. What do you think, Rachel? How many would that be? Four quatrains of four. Sixteen. I think she's got it right. So we find that there's at least 16 people at Peter's prison party, right? So we're growing. I don't know about the last birthday party you had, how many guests you had, but I'm not so sure all these guys wanted to be there, but they were there. And of course, we found Peter was also there, right? So how many were we at now? 17 people at Peter's prison party. So four quatrains, it sounds like a party there. In verse 6, let's just look at here a little bit. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between how many? Two soldiers. I don't know whether they're part of the quatrains or quatrains of soldiers or not, but I'd call them differently. I'd call them two soldiers. And here Peter is, and, and I like this here. The same night he got locked up, and here he is. And what's he doing? Sleeping. 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 Chained to two. Now, I just think about that. You know, I, I just, they didn't have a lot of running water and bars of soap or anything there, a lot of deodorant or anything. I got a feeling these were two stinky soldiers. <laughs> Not real, you know, and soldiers are big guys, right? This might have just been a little twin bed. No, I don't think it was a bed at all. And they are chained. And I don't think they put like a six foot long chain on them either. So here these two soldiers are. Man, I have a hard time sleeping. My wife rolls over in bed and wakes me up. I mean, a little noise outside, and I'm waking up here. Peter is chained to two stinky big soldiers hogging the bed. And what is he doing? Uh, you know, it doesn't sound like he's worried a whole bunch, does it? Here he is, his party, sleeping at his own party. <laughs> I don't understand this. But anyway, and there he is. And so uh, when Herod would have brought him the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. 
Oh, and here it is. So we find there, we've got more keepers at the door there in verse 6. I don't know, we could add this all up. There are all these special close friends that Peter had that he invited to the party. And of course, Peter was there. Sounds like a party, Peter's prison party. Well, anyway, here's the prison party. But you know what was going on during that prison party? Prayer was being provided. Prayer was being provided. We all know how prayer works, don't we? You know, we know the verses on Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Uh, and by the way, we all know we should be praying. I want to thank you for praying for us as well. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching here unto perseverance and supplication for the saints. Philippians 4, verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Colossians 1, verse 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We know 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, to pray without ceasing. We read that passage over there in James chapter 5, verse 16, to confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I believe those people at that church believed that verse, and they were busy doing what they were supposed to be doing. Just same thing as we're supposed to be doing. Prison party and prayer was provided. So let's just look on back at the scripture again there. We find there in six, chat, verse 6 there, Herod would have brought him forth the same night. Here Peter is sleeping between two soldiers. I, just, I, don't, I don't think I could be doing that. I think I'd have been up fretting, chewing on my fingernails. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, I love that word, behold. Whew. The angel of the Lord came up, uh, upon him. And a light shined in the prison. And by the way, that's another one of those things. When I'm sleeping, if somebody turns the light on, I'm up. I'm awake. How about you? I mean, the light shines in the window. I don't need an alarm clock. When the light shines in, I'm up. But if somebody comes in there and flips on the light switch, I'm up. Hmm. Hmm. So let's go back to verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and it didn't wake him up. Is he still sleeping? And he smote Peter on the side. Bam! Had to, had to, knock, had to hit him. The light comes on, and that didn't work. Bam! The smell of the soldiers, the chains rattling, the doorkeepers over there. I don't know what they were probably doing, messing around, doing something. I know they were. They're flipping the light switch or something. I don't know what they were doing, but they're probably messing around. I'm sure they were messing around. There they are. They, the, verse 7 there. And the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and, and, and raised him up. And not only did he smack him, he had to, had to get a hold. Come on, wake up! Had to shake him. Paul does, or Peter doesn't sound like he's got a, a lot to worry about here, huh? He's, he's just, man, I, I needed some rest. I'm getting, maybe this might be how preacher is right now. <laughs> he's, I'm cold like the preacher is right now. Anyway, I'm going to be in trouble. I hope he's not watching. And he says, uh, he, he says, and he spoke Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Can you just imagine that? Man, I love this story. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on their sandals. He's sitting there, he's, in, he's relaxed. He's got his shoes off, sleeping between these soldiers. And, and, he, and, and think, look at him, what it said. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And it doesn't sound like he argued with him or questioned at all, does it? It says there, and so he did. So he did. And he said, saith unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Again, he didn't question him. What did he do? He followed him. And he went out and followed him. And, and I, I love this phrase right here. And wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. In today's language, we would say, he couldn't believe it. He was just like, wow, did this all really just happen to me? i just like, did I just have a dream here? Am I still dreaming? Wow, what is, what is this? I love that phrase there. And this is the kind of old English I love here. Then he says, uh, how did he say it there? He wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel. He just couldn't believe it, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate 
which leadeth to, unto the city, which opened, which opened to them of his own accord. This wasn't one of those solar panel lights that you get close, the gates that open up, you know. No, this, wow. Here he's standing here and he sees this. And one, they go through one gate, and they go through two gates, and, and, and <laughs> pass through onto one street, for it was the angel departed from him. Bam, he's out of there. Imagine Peter had to think about this for a minute. Now what am I going to do? What's next? Well, so what they, I look here, and as we looked at this passage of Scripture, the persecution proceeded, and the people were pleased, and Peter and others were just busy preaching. And then we found the prison, Peter's prison party, and we find the prayer that was provided there back in verse 5 and, and, and again in verse 12 as well. And we know we should be doing that. And we find here Peter's problems, and what they, they, he just, they, they passed, and he just passed right on out, P-A-S-T and P-A-S-S-E-D. They passed the first word, passed the second word, came to lead it to the city, the gate opened, and they passed on through the street, and there the angels gone. It was like a get out of jail free card. Right out there, Then, Yeah, maybe if our little problems would pass too, if we prayed and somebody else prayed too. And we would just, it would, those little problems would just pass too. We find back in our verses there, verse 11, look at what it says there. And when Peter was come to himself. Don't you like that phrase? First of all, we find that little phrase. I love these phrases. There's a lot of them in this passage of Scripture. That they, he wished not that it was true, which was done by the angels, but thought he saw a vision. And here in verse 11, we find that little phrase. When Peter was come to himself. Now, I love these, and we have those times too sometimes. He says, now I know of a surety. The Lord has sent his angels and delivered me. He knew. And from the expectation of the people, the people were all looking and waiting for Herod just to take him out like he did, like he did James back there. Or wasn't it James? Yeah, he killed James. But the people, what are they doing in verse 12? Just still praying. Where many were gathered together praying. There they are. So what happened? Look down there in verse 18. And as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what had become of Peter. You know what that means? It was a big deal. No small stir. I like that little phrase too. That's another one of those phrases that I, are great here in this passage. There was no small stir among the soldiers. Oh, yeah. I don't know everything about this, but I believe it, it affected their families as well. In those days, I've heard many different stories. I don't know that for a fact, but I think, I think it wasn't just the soldiers that got in trouble. And we find on down there a little bit further that they, they were commanded to be put to death. The keepers commanded to be put to death in the next verse there. I, I'm just going to say it this way. They were perplexed and there were problems. <laughs> perplexed and there were problems. No small stir. That's what that means, perplexed and problems. No small stir among the soldiers. I, I looked those words up. Perplexed means to be embarrassed. Wouldn't they be? That was their job. And they were embarrassed. He got out. He snuck through. And I, I know I locked that chain on his wrist. And they're there. I, I wonder if they were still, I wonder if they're sleeping. You know, where'd he go? They were embarrassed. They, they were puzzled. Where did he go? Where is he now? We're going to be in trouble. So yeah, they were perplexed. And, and then come the problems. <laughs> wow, there were, there were a lot of things went on there. But not for Peter. Instead, Peter, he just kept going. We don't, there were problems there. The Lord smoked Herod to dead. There was a lot. Morning came. Peter just went on to the next place. Isn't that what we read there? Get out of jail free. Here I go. They got their problems. But here I am back out here just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. He knew they had prayed for him, didn't he? He knew that. He knew the Lord. They were, oh, Rhoda, I love that. Thou art mad. They were astonished. Oh, it was, it was great. So, you know, it's, we, we look at this one little chapter here, and, and there's so much there, and there's so many just neat things that happen there. That's one of these good stories there. But you know what? It's, it's a... It's the same kind of thing that, that we can just read on and go and look on both sides of this. And it's what same thing kind of happened to Paul too, didn't it? You know, Paul, Acts chapter 9 there is conversion. And, 
And down about verse 20, he gets back. And what does he start? Acts chapter 9, verse 20, I believe it is. What does is, what is Paul get busy doing? Just right back out there preaching. As soon as he got his eyesight back there, he's, he's just out there and he, he's preaching. And what happened to Paul? Just you go on just a few verses after verse 20 there in chap, Acts chapter 9. You'll find out they tried to kill him, tried to stone him too. You know that, what did they do? He started preaching. On came the persecution. He's doing what he's supposed to do, and on comes the persecution. Well, I, I think Paul was in prison a few times too, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, I think so. You, you see the pattern here? The, 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 look, I, I love this. Look more, one more thing. In, uh, in chapter 13, just real quick here. In chapter 13, down in verse 3, and when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. That, that, the praying people are still praying, and I believe they're praying for uh, of Paul in that passage. I, I'm not going to go back and look at it right now, but what's going on there? People are still praying. And what happened? Paul just passed through some things and just kept right on going, things passing. And everybody that was around him, guess what? They became perplexed and puzzled, just like, just like we see right here with Peter. It's the same thing. And uh, should, so should we kind of think that we're going to be exempt from that? Other cases in the Bible, the same thing. We could talk about our Savior and what he did. But Will you do what it takes to keep going with the Lord once you? Will you, will you be pray and preach and teach? And Man, I love those little phrases. I just can't get over them. Can I review them one more time? Those little phrases we found there, and when Peter was come to himself. I love that phrase there. And how about this one? And now I know of a surety. That's a good phrase, too. And, and when he had considered the thing, and then, of course, the little phrase there by Rhoda, what others thought, thou art mad. Well, somebody might just say that about you, too. You just do what you're supposed to be doing. Thou art mad. You ever had anybody tell you that? You're crazy for doing that. It's crazy for starting a school and helping those kids. Crazy for being a pastor's wife. Crazy for going on a mission trip around the world. Crazy for being an evangelist wife. Well, that might be true. <laughs> Thou art mad. The world's not going to think, they're not going to understand it all the time. And you know what? They don't need to. You start worrying about what the world has to say about it, and, and guess what? You'll be quitting. You'll be slowing down. You'll not be doing what you should be doing. Those phrases are, thou art mad. And, and then we can find there in verse 16, they were astonished. Well, they found out Peter. They, they, what happens? They pray. Peter's in prison, and they pray, and now he's at the door knocking, and they're astonished. Well, what do we do about prayer? Do we get astonished? Wow, that prayer got answered. Shouldn't we ex be expecting that? Shouldn't we be counting on that in God's timing? We pray, and, and there it comes. So they were astonished, verse 16. And then, then that phrase there in verse 18, there was no small stir among the soldiers what had become of Peter. And, you know, one day, <laughs> they're going to be wondering where we're at too, aren't they? Amen. Yeah, we're out of here. Then what happened to all those Christians? You know, I, I think about this. Nowhere do I read about a pity party for Peter. No pity party for Peter. And, you know, I, we were looking at Paul there just a little bit. I don't see where there was a big pity party for Paul either. He asked, he, he asked three thrice to have the problem with his eyes removed. And then what did he do? My great, look at those verses. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And 1 Corinthians, I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. No pity party for Paul. By the way, we don't read about a pity party for our Savior either. No, instead he said, forgive them. Forgive them. Well, you know, no one wants, no one wants to hear about a pity party for you either. In fact, save a stamp. And don't send me the invitation to your pity party because I'm not coming. Amen. In fact... Don't send any pity party invitations to my friends either. My wife will not come. Neither will my friend. We don't hear about, I don't want to hear a pity party from you either. We don't hear about our examples of Peter. I would say Peter had a whole lot. Have you ever been saved, chained up to two stinky soldiers? Just one little thing. You've been in prison? Yeah, I, I mean, have we, have we been through what he's there? Have we been through what Paul, have we been through what our Savior went through? We have no business throwing a pity party either. Well, glory. Eeyore. I don't want to be that one. I don't want to participate. I don't want to help you. I'm not going to put 
address envelopes to your pity party. I'm not going to have any part of it. No pity party. No pity party for Peter either. That would be the wrong title for this. Peter's pity party, wouldn't it? Pajama party, maybe. I don't know what, maybe, maybe those soldiers that just came from Walmart and they had their pajamas on still. I don't know. I kind of doubt it. That little phrase, now I know, that's, that's the better title, isn't it? Now I know of a surety. If you have a prayer life going, you can say that too. Now you know of a surety. You know God answers prayer. God's listening and he wants to answer it there. We, we, we know, like, like hear that phrase, now I know. We know how to get saved. We know how to be forgiven. We know, we know how, how to get to heaven. We, we know that, don't we? Now I know. Uh, and now we know uh, what's right, and, and we should plan to do that. Now I know uh, that prayer works, and others need us to be praying, and we need to be busy about the Lord's. Now I know. Just a, a couple little phrases while we're on that. Peter said, that little phrase you can put, uh, I, there's a lot of things that Peter's known for. And I think we maybe ought to forgive him a little bit. And, and I, I think Peter would be a lot happier if we got to know him for this phrase right here, now I know of a surety. I think Peter would be a lot happier having that for his testimony when he's described, wouldn't you? Now I know of a surety. Yeah, and, and I, I think about Paul and, and the phrase that he's known for a little bit there in Acts chapter 9, verse 6, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Boy, isn't that a good little phrase? Paul's known for that little phrase, isn't he? We'll give Peter, now I know of a surety. We'll give Paul, uh, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And, and uh, we know people like Stephen there in Acts chapter 7. He's known for that little phrase, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Forgiveness as he prays to God. And how about our Savior as he's hanging on Calvary? He says, Father, forgive them for they know what they do. And they know not what they do. Those, those are the phrases that they're known for. I think Peter wants to know, now I know of a surety. Now I know of a surety. Well, glory. How about you? What little phrase are you known for? And now we get to live our life out, and it's no different than there. Maybe persecution, and people might be happy and laugh, and things are going to happen, but just pass on the same thing. The whole point is it's our turn now. We know the verses over in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Uh, For I reckon that the suffering of the present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Not even comparable. What we're going through here and what people are going through here is not even, not oranges and apples. Nothing, not even comparable to the glory that shall be revealed in us one day. Not even comparable. We know that all things work together for them so together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Anything for Christ. We go through it, and the Lord goes with it. The Lord goes with us. The Lord delivers just like we see there with Peter. hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, there in verse 11, and the expectation of the people. Now I know. Not time for a pity party. Persecution proceeded. The people were pleased. Peter and others just preaching. But Peter, the prison party goes. Prayers provided. They passed right on through. And others were perplexed. And there was problems, but not for Peter. No, it was, I, I, I got the right thing. Let's call this Peter's victory party. Peter's victory party, amen? Is, wasn't it a victory? And that's what you can have too. And I hope you've had some. I hope it wasn't a pity party. Not pajama party. No, maybe, maybe not. But I sure hope it wasn't a pity party. What's going to happen next time? You know, I, I get to thinking about that. You know, Peter, he, 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 he might have, no, he had already been, we're, we're in Acts now. This is the early church, okay? So if you think back with me, what happened not long before this right here is there was a little conversation between Peter and the Lord. And the Lord told him, before the cock crow thrice, you will deny me. I, I'm, we know that little story, don't we? And then later on, after the burning barrel and everything happened, what did Peter do? It says there, he wept bitterly. 
See, I think Peter had already had some experiences that helped him get to this point where he was in prison. He had maybe, maybe he learned from that time back there. Oh, he's not with me. I'm not with him. Curse and scrap. Maybe he didn't handle it right that time, did he? And maybe we didn't handle it the right time or right way last time either. We need to learn from it. Wept bitterly. And here it comes again. Persecution is just going to come. The next situation, Peter's got... How many would you say Peter did the right thing there? Yeah. Yeah. And he wept bitterly. He realized that that... And he learned his lesson, and here's where he's at. No pity party. Not for Peter, and it shouldn't be for us. Hey, Christians, we're not in prison. <laughs> we're not lost, are we, Christian? We're not, going to, we're not forgotten. It's time for us to learn and to study. I have a list here. It's time for us to learn and to study and to pray and to read and to meditate. Be faithful to the church. Be faithful to the things we should be faithful to. Obey be giving and be ready to serve. Wept bitterly. When we look back, sometimes that's our, I think that's what it's going to be one day when we look back at how we handled some things. We've, we've all thrown a pity party for ourselves, haven't we? And if we're honest with that, we will look back and say, or weep maybe. Instead, just learn. I, ho I hope you've learned from them. Well, Peter went on and did a great thing without having a pity party, just decided to please the Lord with the rest of his life. It affected others. You know, we can look at the two sides of this. Herod did what? He pleased the people. And you see where he ended up? But yet Peter decided, I'm going to please the Lord. The church people decided they were going to pray, please the Lord. And we can see what, how it all worked. By the, by the way, there's, a, there's, a, there's another case in the Bible, where that one little phrase there, and when he came to himself, you remember that little phrase there? Yeah, there, there, was, a, there was a man called the prodigal son. And that same exact phrase, and when he come to himself, like we read right here in verse 11, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety, well, when that prodigal son when he had already got down to nothing and, and a little bit lower than nothing, having a pity party for himself, throwing a pity party, wasn't he? My father and my brothers have all this stuff, and here I am, woe is me, throwing a pity party. He's the one that messed up. Now, he said, the phrase says, in, it says, this is in, you can look it up later. I wrote it down in here somewhere. Uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 17, it says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? Where did the prodigal son go from there? He went back to his father. So when we get tired and fed up with the pity party, maybe that's where we ought to go to. And when he came to him, so. So. I'm done, but who are you trying to please? Who are you pleasing? Who are you praying for? Are you preaching, teaching the way you should? Now I know. I know of a surety. I'm saved and I'm serving. I'm pleasing the Lord the way I should. I'm done. Which one of those phrases was it? Which one of those little phrases was it there that caught you? Which one phrase was it? Now I know of a surety is the right answer. Let me pray for you. Dear Lord, we love you, and thank you again for the privilege of being here. You know these folks, good folks. Lord, I didn't, I didn't give this lesson or preach this tonight because I, I watched somebody throw a pity party. That's not it at all, Lord. It was about prayer. And if we just keep our eyes focused on you the way we should and serve you and make the right choices, not, not like we see some of the examples there, learn from, learn from maybe the last time, maybe just pray like we should as, a, as an individual, pray like we should as a, a church and, and just not participate in the pity parties, but just decide that we're going to please you like the examples that we saw there. When the persecution comes, when, 
people go against us and want to hurt us and our church, our, uh, Lord, we just need to rely on you and count on you and do what's right. Continue doing what we need to be doing, just like Peter did. Learn and kept going. Help us, Lord. Forgive us where we failed you. We give you the thanks and the praise for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. You listened very well again. Okay.